Happy Tuesday, everyone. Time for another live commentary. Now, I should warn you guys in advance, uh, my throat is a little bit sore today. I hope it doesn't develop into anything too terrible. But if I cough sometime during the video, I apologize. I also have a, a lovely cup of warm tea here that I'm going to sip from periodically. So I hope that doesn't get too obnoxious, but I need to take care of my voice. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to keep making these videos. But anyway, for your viewing pleasure today, we have the second semifinal from the Bond World Cup this February. On the left, we have Alexei Cheremisinov. Uh, I talked about him. He got eliminated in the round of 32 at Rio by his teammate Timur Safin. But don't let that fool you. He is a very strong competitor. He was world champion in 2014, and he's been pretty close to the top in senior tournaments uh, since maybe around 2010, 2012-ish. On the right is his opponent, Guillaume Bianchi. Now, uh, it's very tempting to make a physics joke about the Bianchi identities, but I don't think anyone would get that. But anyway, in all seriousness, uh, he is, I think, 20 years old. He very recently graduated from junior events, and this is the first time he's ever made it this far in a senior tournament uh, ever, I'm pretty sure. Um, very excited to see him in the semifinals. Uh, he is a very strong competitor. I haven't seen much of him uh, since I don't watch that many junior events, but I'm very excited to see what he has in store for us. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. Three, two, one, and go. Okay. Audio seems good. I'm not going to adjust the volume this time. Hehe. <laughs> So we're going to test and get right into this thing. Both fencers are right-handed. Uh, I would give the advantage to Cheremisinov just because he's been around very long. He's got a lot of international experience. I'm pretty sure he's th in his 30s. I want to say like 32 or 33. They're going for the Ramiz. Bianchi's pair of is off target. We'll see. I've, I'm have i interested to see how this goes. Bianchi has the youth and enthusiasm advantage, you might say, and Cheremisinov has the age and experience. But this could go really any uh, in a wildly different sort of directions. We can infer some things about Bianchi's style. Uh, being Italian, we'd expect a little bit more marching in three than in like six or eight or anything. Uh, Cheremisinov, we know quite a bit about. He's very technical. Um, doesn't like that many marching attacks. Um, when he does, it's pretty slow, kind of like what Safin does, and he ends with an accelerating advance lunge more often than not. I don't know what the referees are talking about right now. Is there a problem with the machine? Hmm. Well, this is this is kind of strange. <laughs> the crowd applauds as uh, Florin Jorge came up and just simply hit a button. And we're going to start fencing again. Bianchi attacks, Chermisinov parries. Okay, first pair of post to know the Ramiz from Bianchi was off target there. So that's interesting. Chermisinov's point control is very good, but it's not perfect as we can see here. Very, very slow preparation there from Cheremisinov, baiting Bianchi to go for the attack in preparation. This is interesting. <laughs> does he stop enough, though? No, he does not. Okay, so it's attack for Cheremisinov. Slow and steady seems to be the name of the game for him right now. Although, this looks even unusually slow for him, so he might be injured or something? I don't know. Oh! Little over-eager there from Bianchi, I think. Maybe, maybe a bit of nervousness. Uh, jumping in the air like that, not generally recommended when you're on the attack. It's more of a counterattack sort of uh, thing to do. Okay, Jeremy Snow goes for a long finish, tries for the Ramiz a couple times. He does have a pretty long reach advantage over Bianchi. He's quite a bit taller. You can see him there leveraging it, but again, he's not making that many marching attacks. It's mostly just finish the lunge and be done with it. Now, Bianchi's style is also pretty interesting, because he hasn't attacked that much in three like you'd expect from many Italians. He's actually attacking with his blade kind of down. So maybe this is a sign of things to come uh, uh, in the future. Bianchi is obviously quite young. He's brought probably a lot of uh, things up from the junior circuit that are potentially working very well here today uh, that have gotten him this far. But we shall see. Chermisnov taking a bit of extra time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take another sip of tea real fast. Ah, delicious. All right. I'll try not to do that uh, during the actual bout, so it's not terribly distracting. During the fencing, I mean, parry post there from Cheremisinov. Now, because he's so tall, uh, there's a lot of distance Bianchi has to cover to get to him, and that means that parry post is pretty, pretty strong in that situation. Um, 
You see this a lot with tall fencers. They'll they'll have the blade pretty far out. Ooh, that's nice though. Beat attack no from Bianchi. Jeremy's not counterattack. But yeah, you see that with taller fencers versus shorter fencers. They tend to be a bit out in front of them, so that if the taller fencer decides to crush the distance, they have to cross a huge amount of ground, and in that space, attack left is the call. Okay. Uh, but in that in that amount of time that it takes uh, the shorter opponent to get from one end of the danger zone to the other. Uh, there's time to do infinitely many things. In this case, Jeremy Snob's deciding parry post. Goes for a withheld flesh? Or a withheld running attack sort of thing? It's interesting. Jeremy Snob's footwork is not looking as strong as I'm used to seeing from him. It's it's kind of, uh, kind of I, I hesitate to say lackadaisical, because he's still clearly like trying to uh, work the distance. But he's not as low or as wide as you sometimes see from him. Bianchi's speed attack should be off target here. Yep. Ooh, Jeremy Snuff. Now there may have been two blade contacts. I pretty I'm pretty sure I only heard one. This will have to be a video uh, video review, and of course I can't see it, so I can't really commentate on it. But I'm gonna go with my gut and say it's gonna keep being uh, Bianchi's attack off target. Now Jeremy Snuff does have a pretty convincing lead at this point, and it was mostly. Um, that parry post we saw from long distance, and a couple of uh, oh call changes, very nice, good video from Jeremy Snuff there. There must have been two blade contacts, and I simply didn't hear the second one, but of course I am fallible. That's why I'm commentating and not refereeing or fencing these. Attack and preparation. Yep. So that's yeah. I'm. I don't know about this preparation from uh, Jeremy Snuff. It's. It's so incredibly slow that Bianchi's attack and preparation has a very legitimate chance of just working. Uh, even if Jeremy Sinov is going for the pair of posts. And here in close distance, that seemed to be just straight up out fighting him, or, or out hand speeding him. Perhaps he was not ready for the distance to collapse that rapidly, but uh, typically, as I say several times, as I've said several times in various videos, uh, shorter fencers tend to have more explosive footwork than taller fencers. What's the call? Repost off target, I believe that. The blade contact was pretty convincingly on Bianchi's guard there. Slow starting to a long lunge for Jeremy Snob. That seems to be his modus operandi for attacking. But again, this preparation, it's so halting, he's barely even starting at all. Pair post again with a long lunge, it's going to be off target. So I feel like if Bianchi can figure out that distance for Jeremy Snob's longest lunge and simply dance in and out of that, when he goes for these attacks in preparation and whatnot, he might actually have a chance here. Parry post is off target from the right. But on the other hand, Jeremy Snov has the technique to be able to land those long lunges very easily if the distance is not perfect for Bianchi. So this could go uh, as we've been seeing so far. That's a nice counterattack. Not sure. Well. Not sure whose blade contact it was actually. It may not have been a counterattack at all, but he did run away afterwards. But Bianchi's starting to pull things back a little bit. I think he's getting a little more comfortable with uh, how Chermisinov is trying to handle him. Chermisinov's defense, though, has uh, been fairly immaculate, I have to say. His, um, for all the maybe lack of intensity in his footwork, uh, it is getting him to the right place to parry, uh, parry Bianchi's attacks very easily. I was just being annoying. Always on Bianchi's blade. What's going to happen? I don't know. Do we want to go for the uh, non-combativity call? <laughs> Second period. There it is. <clears throat> oh, wait. What's going on? Is something wrong again? No, no. We're just going to the second period. Okay. Yeah, so in case you didn't know, a non-combativity in foil... Um, is uh, no longer a yellow card as it was way back in the day. Now, uh, recently changed. Actually, I shouldn't really say recently. It was a few years ago. Um, so now, uh, you just go to the next period uh, and start the clock over at three minutes. Go to the second period. No break in between. So this way, if fencers don't really want to fence each other, the bout will uh, run out of time very fast. Um, what's going on? Oh, he's got to <laughs> pull that body cord through so it doesn't tangle up anything and uh, pose a safety hazard. <laughs> that was very odd, though. All of a sudden, we're 
just in the second period, like nothing's really happened. Bianchi marches. I'd almost call that like a French style march, but it's a little bit slower than that. It's it's very low and very out of the way. But again, Sheremisov's pair and post game has been very solid this bout. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just waiting. This is, yeah. This almost feels like a kind of old school, like maybe mid 2000s type uh, situation, because. Like, before the marching attack developed, there was a, uh, a bit more of this where defense was largely static. Like, you'd basically stand around, wait for your opponent's attack, and then uh, pair or post or, or counterattack or something as you see fit. Nowadays, with the marching attack being so prevalent, uh, defense has shifted more to being uh, maybe a little bit more favoring the counterattack than the pair or post, or at least using counterattack to set up pair or post. Uh, but no matter what happens, it's almost always going to involve some sort of consistent backward motion as your opponent marches. Here it's pretty interesting that Cherry is um, kind of standing uh, quite literally in defiance of that uh, convention now. Although Bianchi's attacks have not been uh, really threatening enough to force him to uh, to back up and treat them as normal. Like here, yeah, Bianchi's marching, but like, oh, okay. <laughs> I eat my words there. That was very nice. Um, sudden acceleration, double advance lunge. So maybe now it'll start to uh, morph into a more modern uh, type situation. But here, Chirmius now takes the blade over. Attacks. Can't quite find a way through. Bianchi post no. And Chirmius now's Ramiz arrives. That's interesting. I'm not sure why Bianchi missed. I don't think he was out of distance. I think he just straight up uh, whiffed. Which is somewhat disappointing. Chirmius now's attacks have not been that threatening. It's been mostly the Ramiz situation. But here... <laughs> Jeremy Sav is a very tall guy, he's got long reach, and that combined with the sudden acceleration can catch Bianchi off guard now twice in a row. Maybe the first one wasn't quite catching him off guard, but simply uh, capitalizing on his mistake. But I wonder if Bianchi will be able to deal with Jeremy Sav's attacks. There's an attack in preparation again, off target. So, it's like, kind of like that situation, um, oh, I forget which bout it was. Interesting, the calls attack, no attack. But this may be sort of like a situation in a previous bout, I think a Rio bout that I talked about, where um, there was a fencer, in this case I guess it would be Cheremisinov, where if they do a very slow start into a very fast finish, you can catch them there as Bianchi tried to do. You can catch them on the acceleration, uh, right at the critical moment where they're not quite ready to hit, but they're going too fast uh, to stop themselves. And actually I think it was Meinhardt versus Lepeshu, Garrick was doing it against Lepeshu. Uh, and we're, we saw that here, Bianchi tried it, but Chermisnov's reach and his acceleration were a little bit too long and too fast, respectively, and he managed to get a light regardless. So it seems Bianchi just doesn't quite have the distance uh, the distance control he needs to be able to set up that kind of touch on Chermisnov. And he can keep trying it, but I'm worried he's going to keep bleeding touches. And if he tries something else, I'm not sure what his options are at this point, because... Chirmisov's pair of repost has been basically able to shut down most of Bianchi's attacks, except that one really nice one we saw recently. So I don't think throwing himself at Chirmisov is going to do much. It will disrupt that attack uh, for a time, but now Chirmisov gets to march again. Off target, yep. Bianchi tried another very strong attack in preparation, but that time I think Chirmisov was coming a little bit faster and was able to still find the target. He was in, uh, in finishing mode. Uh, much sooner than before. Honestly, he's looking a lot more aggressive uh, now than he was, even in the first period, which uh, we didn't even have a one-minute break in between them. So I'm not sure what Jeremy Snob has changed, but he certainly looks more, more into it right now. What happened there? Oh, I guess it's uh, Bianchi's touch. <laughs> oh man, you know Bianchi kind of reminds me of Jeffrey Tourette almost with his footwork. Very tiny steps, but very wide feet all the time. Can he find the repost? Counter repost? Oh my God, fighting for the blades. At the very end of the strip. Um, now Chermisnov is. It looks like he's kind of trying to force these second intention touches through, and I'm not sure that's going to be the right idea because Bianchi's been able to. Here he lands an attack. 
But yeah, Bianchi's been able to defend himself with parry post pretty well if he gets back to the end. If if Cherimisinov doesn't hit with the first attack of the Remise and catch Bianchi off guard, uh, I think those like second attention counter posts back and forth and back and forth are not really going to favor anyone. Yeah, actually, that that does remind me a lot of Jeffrey Tourette. That's like, <laughs> I could I could almost see him in a similar situation. Although I do think of the two of them, Bianchi is this, uh, stronger. Um, there's Bianchi's attack. Very nice. Yeah, actually, tell me in the comments what you think. Uh, does Bianchi look like Jeffrey Tourette to you, or am I just seeing things? Because there are some of those. He's he's not going so crazy with the flicks. Um, that's more of an American tendency. Oh, wow. Oh, no. That's very nice, actually, from Alexei. Uh, Jeremy Sinov. Um, <laughs> makes a big step. Uh, looking like he's finishing too soon to draw out Bianchi's counterattacks. He actually managed it a couple of times in succession. Bianchi tried uh, to, but the second time he committed so hard, he was already twisting. Uh, Chermizanov just slows his attack up and finishes very easily. Counter time parry to post off target. He makes a preparation step to draw Bianchi's attack in preparation and tries to use the parry post that has worked so well in the past. Sadly, he goes off target. Again, the Bianchi's able to escape the long lunge, but here, again, stepping in with the parry post. It's all parry post now from Jeremy Sinov. And it's like, Bian Bianchi's footwork is good, but Jeremy Sinov... Oh, again, I, I don't know how I feel about that jumping forward type withheld attack. That seems <laughs> maybe a little bit uh, optimistic from Bianchi. I don't think that's the type of action that'll get him to come back here, but at this point, Jeremy Sinov up 14-8, considerably more experienced. He's almost certainly going to have a, a pretty clean way of uh, closing this bout out against his much younger Italian opponent. Let's see what it is. <laughs> it's a stepping in counterattack. Wow, that was that was interesting. I'm very impressed, honestly, that Bianchi's made it this far at a senior tournament uh, right after, basically, uh, doing very well in juniors. It's, it's pretty rare that junior fencers uh, can age up into senior tournaments so smoothly. Um, normally there's a bit of a like performance drop as they kind of get used to fencing much tougher opponents more regularly and then they start to come back up. We saw this with people like Chupinich, uh, some of the Japanese fencers as well. Uh, but for Bianchi at least, it seems he's having a very good day. Sadly though, not able to edge out. <laughs> the names are already switched over to Kado and Masialis because that was the other semifinal that I did uh, last week. But next week, We'll see Cherimisinov, uh victorious here, go up against uh, Alex Masialis, the winner of the previous bout. So anyway, guys, until next time, stay sharp. I'm going to drink some more tea. Ah, delicious.